the monitor in front of me. Um, but hopefully I can get it through uh, the next 30 minutes. We're just going to just do like the core elements yeah. of Aspen Actually, here. I'll just mention that. So we have a couple of choices <laughs> in life. We can um, try to find the perfect time that works for us and works for everyone and try to uh, do a one hour show the same exact time every single week, which we have for a really long time. But as things change, things got busy and uh, just life and tariffs and COVID and kids, you, know, you name it, everything that move our factory, everything. It's really hard. In fact, no one's doing live electronic shows. That's why yeah. everyone yeah. has lives. The reason. And then uh, I thought, well, you know what? Let's just do even more then. <laughs> Instead of less, let's do more. But it might not be at the same time. <coughs> it might be in a social network that you're on all the time, that you get little videos. Maybe, maybe we just do more, but it's when we can and where we can. And maybe you can always watch it later. There's no thing that's just... It's live and you'll never see it again. Maybe we should do something like that one day. Okay. Um, but until then, you'll always be able to watch it sometime somewhere else. So don't worry about it. And there is one thing you do have to do. What? Within the next few hours, though. It saves some money. That's right. We still have a discount code. <laughs> yeah, it's a discount code to see boost 10% off in the store, all the way up to 11 p.m. p.m. Eastern Time, all that stuff. Um, we're going to do INMPI, brought to you by DigiKey. It's CIT Relay and Switch. Then we're gonna new pro do new products. Um, you can hang out in Discord. You know, um, we'll maybe answer questions. Maybe not. I don't know what's gonna happen next. We have to there's leave a, at nine thirty. There's that free stuff. Yeah. And then we have same day shipping in New York. Da 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 da. This is uh, Ask an Engineer. Um, we're gonna keep doing this no matter what edition. Speed round. <laughs> yeah. You can only see behind. The <coughs> I um, like the background. That's cool. It looks great. I like it. Lots of surface. Um, let's go immediately to uh, INMPI. Let's do it. You ready? Yep. Hi on MPI. Hi on MPI. Brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Adafruit and DigiKey bring you the latest new product introduction. NPIs. This week it is CIT Relay and Switch. Lady Ada, what is the new product introduction of the week? This week. Okay, this week we are highlighting CIT, which we have not done yet. I always love it when I see a new company. Um, you know, we love all those like standard big co's, but um, I like a company that's also specialized. This one specializes in, as you guessed it, relays and switches. Today we're going to be looking at the L115F series of latching relays. Um, these are really cool because they're extremely high power, chunky relays, but they have latching coils, which are my favorites. Um, so here's the data sheet for this series. Uh, comes in a bunch of different voltages at the bottom there. The contact ratings available 30, 40, 50 amps at 277 um, volt AC. So you can use it with Europe, American, Australian, Japan, Canada, Canada 2, Canada 3, Greenland, the return, um, et cetera. So it's useful anywhere. Great for switching large amounts of current. Like 50 amps is a lot um, at, at AC or uh, DC voltages. Um, so there's a lot of relays available from DigiKey, and we've even covered a bunch of relays um, on INMPI of various types, but we've never covered a latching relay. And the thing about latching relays is cool is if you've ever used a relay, um, you know how they work, they have an electromagnet, you put current through the electromagnet and the contact closes, so they're making the, the circuit. But as long, if you want to keep that circuit closed, you have to maintain the current through that electromagnet. And so here, this is a non-latching relay available from CIT. This is the J series, not the L latching series. And you'll see that um, depending on whether you have the 0.9 or 1.5 watt version, you know, at five volts, you're doing like 200 milliamps through there because um, the resistance is only like, you know, 28 or, or 17 volts. So, you know, as long as the current is being maintained, you're, you're going to just lose that 200 milliamps um, into heat into that electromagnet. You have to be like, man, like if only there was a way for me to not have to, like I want to activate the relay, but I don't have to maintain that current. Well, that's why you want a latching relay. So the cool thing about these is if you look at <coughs> the top uh, diagram, there's the mechanical diagram at the bottom, but the top is like a schematic. This is the kind of standard one that's normal open, normal close. It's a 1C footprint. And you see at the bottom, pins two and three have R and S next to them. And that means set and reset. So you'll notice if you have positive on pin two and negative on pin three, that's reset. So that'll turn it to like the default normally closed and uh, is, is closed. 
and it's a set, you put negative on two and positive on three, and that inverted voltage will set it so that will turn on the real light and activate um, the normally open contact to be closed, um, that's completing your circuit. So what's nice is that after you set or reset, you don't have to keep holding that current. It's only like a one-time thing. Ooh, how handy. So you only need like a couple milliseconds of current. Um, so one thing to note is because you're know, like, wait a minute, I have to have positive and negative, and you still need to have that five volt, like 100, 200 milliamps, maybe 24 volts, you might need an H bridge um, to drive these. So that's a kind of the downside is that um, it's much more complicated to use in a normal relay where you just need a single transistor. Here you need you know, either four transistors or you just get like an off the shelf H bridge because you have to treat it sort of like a motor where you're inverting the direction uh, depending on whether you set or reset. So this series comes in a bunch of different configurations, um, SPST or SPDT. So if you don't need a normal open or normal closed contact, you just want one, get the SPST. Contact rating, um, you're gonna pay a little bit more for 40 or 50 amps versus 30. Core voltages, pick the voltage that matches you know, the, the power that you have available in your system. You know, if you have 12 volts available, it's better to use that than to like down convert it to five and then use that to control the, the coil voltage. Use the highest voltage you've got. So it's great for automotive or industrial, 12, 24 and 48 volts are available. Um, coil power, depending on how um, strong that electromagnet has to be for the 50 amp, you might need the 1.5 watt. And then there's also um, standard and low profile. So this is the 1C footprint. There's actually other footprints available but this is the one that is um, in stock right now. So you'll see the standards on the left and the low profiles on the right, they have the same exact footprint, but the low profile is just like sunken, like it doesn't have the body go up as high and so the pins stick out the top and those are the normal open, common and normal close. You would use um, your standard spade connectors to get to it and they're in, stock. They're in stock right now. You can actually pick them up. Um, a really good deal. It's like whatever, five bucks in single quantity, four, four seven, five singles. Um, and it gets lower from there to get a latching relay. If you're doing something that's battery powered, or even if you're like, look, I don't want to waste half a watt whenever I'm activating this relay. Um, it'll also last a little bit longer because you're not like, you know, activating the relay constantly. It's, you only have to turn it on. The plastic latches in place. You let go, it's a little easier, less heat, less wear, less power supply management, altogether, kind of nice. Good pick this week. Bit of a deep cut from someone we didn't cover yet, CIT. That's right. That's INMPI. 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 Alrighty. Okay. Halfway into it. <laughs> I didn't have okay. my mic on, but that's okay. I guess the audio was good enough between yours. Yeah, being obviously here. these are. So and we're 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 like this. Yeah, high. yeah. This is this is deceiving. Yeah. Um. So the code is CBoost. Don't forget. Ten percent off the name for store all the way up to eleven fifty nine p.m. Um. We're gonna jump right into new products. Are you ready? Yes. Mediana? Here we go. New 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 new. New, new. All right. Lots of updated actually this week. Yeah. Uh, we do have some news. Updated, uh, everyone's favorite NAU 7802. This is a strain gauge. You can see the little strain gauge sensor there. Um, this is a 24 bit ADC for um, measuring strain gauges and other wheatstone bridges. Okay. Um, and people requested, hey, can you like pin out those, that B ADC? Because I pinned out the A only. And I was like, oh, I'll get to it, get to it. And finally I got to it. So I revised this to now have a six pin um, terminal block instead of a four pin. So you get um, both the A and B ADCs. You'll have to, in the code, I added to the Arduino library at least, code to let you switch between the two analog devices. You can't read both ADCs at the same time, but if you want like two strain gauges, I guess, you could have two connected up and maybe do differential it. measurements. The I don't know. Connectors here. But yeah, uh, yeah in stock and available right now. So it's a nice little update. Nice. Okay, next up. <coughs> okay, next up, we've updated the, I'm, I'm going through and I'm actually like fixing all the e-ink stuff that's been out of stock. Thanks everybody who's been patient. It just, e-ink stuff gives me the ick. Um, it drives me a little nuts to work on it. So it just takes even, some time. Even computers don't like it. Um, we were no, talking we're... today, you know all the 
AI, LLMs, this Ian code, they don't want to touch it. They're just like, no thanks, I'm going to go work on the uh, issue is like clips. every time you get a display, you have to like ask the manufacturer for the documentation and code. And it's always, it's always just really terrible. And then I have to like convert it into like beautiful Arduino or Python code. So anyways, the 2.9 inch e-ink displays um, now come with an SSD 1680 um, chipset. Um, it's a little bit faster, a little bit better. Uh, so I've updated both the feather wing. So this is like you attach a feather onto the back for a tricolor display. And also I've updated the breakout version. Um, both now have the same display. Again, it's SSD 1680. Um, otherwise it's, it, these are kind of nice. I think hopefully we'll be able to stick with um, this chipset for a bit. And this is the latest version um, now available in the Adafruit shop. All right, are you ready? Uh -huh. Next <coughs> up. Next up, we're actually going to get to some new products. Yay. Okay, first up is the um, AS5600 sensor. This is from um, AMS. Uh, somebody sent this over and said, this is a pretty nice little sensor because it actually, like, the ice core sea spits out the angle that it detects of a magnet. So you know, normally people have um, a potentiometer, right, and you can twist it, and it can measure, like, 0 to 270 degrees. Or you can have a rotary encoder, which only has 24 spots, but it can go all the way around. Well, the, what's nice about this sensor is when you pair it with a magnet, and the magnet, you know, you have the north and south be the knob of the, that's how it's detected, um, it will convert it to an absolute angle between zero and 360 with like 0.4 accuracy, degree accuracy, and 0.1 degree precision. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Uh, you don't have the mechanical wear of a potentiometer or a rotor encoder. You don't get only 24 dots per rotation. You get like, you know, 360 de degrees. It goes all the way around and it can keep track of absolute position. Like rotor encoders, you know, they only tell you if you move left or right. They don't tell you if, um, like where you are in the um, rotation. But what's nice about um, this sensor, you see there's a magnet behind it it detects what the angle of the magnet is. And you can put the magnet on top or behind either one. All right. That's a new product. Next up, the star of the show tonight, Lena, besides you, besides our team, besides the entire community doing stuff, besides all the people who share things, make this place a little bit better, is we're selling the word Adafruit. The word Adafruit. <laughs> so this is the uh, TPS 6116 boost converter. Um, and this is a, a boost converter specifically designed for driving LEDs in constant current mode, uh, which is different than most boost converters. So most boost converters we have give you like 5 volts out or 12 volts or whatever. What's interesting about this one is it gives you a constant current and you can select what current you oh, want cool. by flicking those switches at the top. So by default it's 25 mm. milliamps, but you can add 25, add 50, add 100, add 200, basically up to 400 milliamps. So you can go up to 40 volts or up to 400 milliamps. Check the part description because I explained you can't do 40 volts at 400 milliamps. There's kind of like a balance between it. But what's nice is this is great for driving our LED filaments and nudes, especially like the long 12 yeah. volt and 24 volt versions because they're kind of annoying and weird to drive. You need like a 24 volt power supply and they need a resistor. And then like, what if you want to dim it? So what's nice is that like, for example, here, I'm just running off a couple of AA batteries. You give the boost converter three to five volts in. And then you connect the LED to the output, and then it will automatically boost to whatever voltage you need in order to get that 25 to 400 milliamps, whatever you've selected, output. Uh, and then, of course, you just flick the uh, switches to change the constant current. And if you want to dim it um, on the breakout itself, oops, sorry, yeah. there is a PWM pin. So, you know, if you want to have external PWM control, you can dim it, but you don't have to. If a lot of people just want to have the, the LED on, what's nice is there's no soldering required because it, come, because it comes with terminal blocks. You just put in your power input, you have your LED output, and then it's great for both a nude, or in this case, if you see, I have, uh, oh. You're going to go back there. Yeah. You have eight LEDs, three volts in a row. They're only drawing 50 milliamps, but you, the wiring is really simplified because you connect one anode to another cathode, all the way you know, across, you have whatever 20-ish, 24 volts uh, of, uh, of power, but it doesn't, you, know, you don't have to worry about that 
the booster will automatically just figure out whatever the voltage has to be in order to drive 50 milliamps. All right. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what people are going to do with this because they already started some cool projects. And Glowy stuff. More glow. All right, that's new products. New, 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 new. Don't forget to code to see boost, 10% off, need for store, all the way up to 11.59 p.m. We <coughs> did a special um, let's do whatever we can edition. <coughs> no, sorry. I'm like, I see I'm already dying again. Yeah, but it's, then you come back like the Phoenix. I have to get one more of those like menthol drops. Those things are killer. Yeah. Um, but you can cough on me all you want. I won't do anything. Well, you you already had got through this. You already... Never left. Mm -hmm. um, so let's uh, wish everyone goodbye. Thanks, everybody. We'll see everybody next week. We're going to continue to do all of our shows. It just might be uh, as bizarre and weird and exciting and scary as the times. We're going to have little videos here. We'll have longer videos there. We'll have a consistent ask in here most of the time. And then when chaos happens, I think we'll just turn on the camera and whatever we have ready to go, we'll do. Because I think everyone needs this content. Dude, I do. Okay. Right? It's good stuff. Yeah. Open source. Sharon. Being good. See everybody next week. This has been Adafruit Production. Here is your moment of Zener. <laughs>